Thank you for being with us today. No, thank you for your invitation. Well, great. Uh, you have a very uh, complicated kind of last name, so can I refer to you as uh, your staff, I believe, as Mr. Z or Jay-Z? Jay-Z, <laughs> Jay and, and, and I have received a lot of complaints. The rapper is really in shock that more people refer to him as the other Jay-Z. Okay. So, definitely. So in the Kansas City, I'm the Jay-Z. You're the Jay-Z. Totally. Okay. Okay, well, uh, let's start with your background. You mm -hmm. have such an impressive uh, internationally, an international background. Can so, you give us a little bit about? Well, yourself? actually, Sugasagoitia, my last name is is from from the Basque region of of Spain. But uh, through the Second World War, both my mother's family and my father's family immigrated to Mexico, and I was born in Mexico City, grew up there, um, and then eventually went to France to do my studies and. Uh, one thing led to another. I started working with UNESCO, then I started working with the Getty, taking care of a lot of cultural heritage uh, projects throughout uh, Africa, throughout uh, Europe and Middle East. And then um, in 1999, I was invited by the Guggenheim to join the staff of the museum in New York. And from there, I moved on to El Museo del Barrio, which was the first time I became museum director also on Museum Mile on Fifth Avenue in New York, so just blocks from the Guggenheim. And from there, to Kansas City. So it's, okay. it's in a nutshell, that has been a little bit of a, of a long way to go. Mexico City, Kansas City was shorter, but I had to go all the way through right. Europe and the world to come back here. Right. <coughs> now, within that time, you learned six languages? Totally, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. wow, impressive. Yeah. So, okay, um, the job opening comes up in Kansas City, and you're yeah. thinking... What? So what I'm thinking is, first of all, the Nelson Atkins is a museum that is so well known. Many of the works of art that we hold in our collection is, is the, those art, works of art that I learned when I was studying at the School of the Louvre, you know. And of course, the Louvre has pretty good paintings itself, but there in the school, many of the works of art that we were referencing, whether it's Chinese art or, or European art or some others of the collections, were works of art. So the Nelson Atkins name has been in my m mind for many, many years in the art world. So when the position was open, the other factor that was very important is in recent times, one of the things that had brought it back to the forefront was the extension, the new wing that is the block building that has been created and designed by uh, Stephen Hall. And I know by chance happened to know Stephen for many years and also the opening for him was a very important thing. But when it was voted, by Time Magazine uh, that year in 2007, one of the 10 wonders of the world and one of the 10 most beautiful buildings of the decade. Well, definitely it, it, it brought even more to my attention. So definitely the Nelson has been always in the back of my mind, but uh, when the opportunity, when um, Mark Wilson announced that he was retiring and the search committee reached out, it was, it was really a sense of the opportunity of leading a world-class institution after all of the great efforts to put it where it is today. You know, it's to put it really on the map because what it takes to renovate, to expand, to put all the collections at the level they are today was an amazing effort of the predecessor and all the generations before. But uh, the sense that there's so much yet to be accomplished is what it got me here. Well, I understand <coughs> it was a unanimous, a unanimous decision to uh, hire you as the new director. I hope the, it's uh, not down the hill from there. <laughs> <laughs> so the the set starts after. Oh, well, <laughs> um, <coughs> you spoke of plans during your first year yes. mm -hmm. to explore the most remarkable treasures that yes. we already have, and I believe there's 33,500 arts. There's art exactly, are there are almost 33,000. Now, like most museums, uh, we do not have them all on display on public view. Some because perhaps they're not ranked high enough to be shown at all times. Others, because they're so precious that we rotate them on a constant basis so that their lifespan is expanded. 
So, for instance, there's some scrolls, paintings, Chinese scrolls, or some works of art on paper that are so fragile that the idea is that we show them, for instance, every three years, you know. And, and those are not natural rotations. And we do, or we do special shows around them from time to time to invite the audience to rediscover them. But the greatest part of our masterpieces are always on display. And, and we have from our Caravaggio to our great Chinese sculptures to our uh, African collection or photography that, for instance, that, that is one of those collections that changes and rotates constantly. And it is such a vast collection and it's such a vast uh, wealth of, uh, of works of art that I wanted to create a device or, or, or a series in which it would force me almost to be in contact and, uh, and, and look at all the collection in a very systematic way. So that is when this lecture series called Art Tasting with Julien uh, appeared because what I recognize is that the curators have an enormous amount of talent. They know their collection so well. I was coming here with less knowledge of, of that, uh, of their materials. And so what I wanted is to engage in a dialogue more out of the sense of my being not an expert in every field, but an art enthusiast, just like you. You okay, know, like right. we like the arts, but we don't always know everything about a piece of art. So what we want is, and what I'm asking the curators, is to tell me why it is great, why this painting is better than this one, right. or why do they see <coughs> this one being more valuable, or why didn't we buy it if, if, for one reason or another, a piece of art was not you know, a collection that we did, passed on. So those conversations have been fascinating and the public has enjoyed them. There's some more casual. It's like, you know, it's like having a conversation right now. It's more casual. It's, it's, it's those kind of moments in which the curators have enjoyed also that even if we have a large audience and we're very fortunate that our auditorium has been filled uh, for each of these, but they feel like we could be in a kitchen having a drink talking about art and that is a bit the spirit and that's why art tasting and and, and these are held <coughs> every thursday or it's one thursday i think a month okay. and so each with each uh, curator i've had one of these conversations i could not do it once a week because the, the rhythm and the depth also the the study that i need just to prepare and to, to would be to sustain and no one would want to see me once a week either i guess <laughs> okay well we're going to take a break and we're going to be back with uh one of your other acquisitions that was uh kind of interesting. Perfect. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 